It's probably one of the most famous of Leonardo's pictures. And what it said was the body was perfectly proportioned, that the distance between the fingers was the same as the height, etc., etc. I'm going to now shatter your illusions. It was the one concept that was total baloney. <laughs> totally wrong. He did not get it right, nor did any of the scientists of those days, partly due to what Hack was talking about before. We know that our DNA is transferred to our children, and each little bit of our measurements, whether it's the length of your femur or the length of your tibia or whatever, is slightly different in every person. I have a very good example to tell you. I have a very dear friend who's an anatomist, who when he and I sit down in a lecture theatre, we look the same height. In other words, if you stood, sat behind us, you'd see two heads at the same height. When we stand up, he's six foot two. And I'm not six foot two, I think. Probably. And when we go on an aeroplane, he hates going on an aeroplane because his femurs are so long they don't fit into the seat in front. And those of you that, well, there aren't many people here that are over six feet. It's interesting, in, in the society in Sarawak, not many people are very tall. But if you're in an American society, six foot is quite common. But the point is that the body proportions are not perfect. No one in this room is a perfect human being. Well, maybe some of you think you are, but believe me. <laughs> All right? That, that probably applies to the, uh, the dean. Um, but what they did do, they tried to proportion the body. And when I was originally asked to go and help on this exhibition, I was talking to the person who was in the print room in Windsor Castle. And I said, but wasn't the Alba Dura, who was another artist of the same period, didn't he do a lot of work on proportions? And the, the master turned round and he went into the shelf and he went like this, and he opened a 1505 book. And I looked at it and it was as, measure, as many measurements as I've ever seen in any book in my life. It was 300 pages of detailed measurements of every bone in the body trying to show that they were all proportioned to each other. And the whole thing, of course, was rubbish because no one has got the correct proportion. There is no correct proportion. They're different in every human being, but they didn't understand genetics in those times. But that's one area where Leonardo got it completely wrong. Now, being an inquisitive guy, he wanted to know where babies came from. And I'm going to show you two pictures. This was the first one, and this is a picture of intercourse. And what he has shown is the male with the penis, the uterus, the vagina of the female, the breast of the female, and you will notice that he's following what we call Galenic principles. Galen, who I said was the Roman anatomist, who actually, everything that Galen said was what everyone believed in for 1500 years. And he said that babies were made from the animal soul, the spiritual soul, and the material soul. So what has he got? He's got something coming from the spine into the penis. He's got something coming from the heart, a, a passageway coming from the heart into the penis. And he's got a passageway coming from the testes into the penis. And this was the first drawing that Leonardo did on where babies come from. The only thing he didn't do, he didn't check the cross-section of the penis, because, of course, there aren't three different tubes inside the penis. But that's the drawing he did. And what's also very interesting, his comment was, and he drew a breast here, and he showed a passageway from the nipple down to the uterus. And he said, which is fascinating, he said that when a woman becomes pregnant, she loses her period, absolutely right, and the periods become breast milk. Now, we know that not to be true, but you may laugh, but actually, take yourself back without knowledge, that's quite a good idea. Every woman loses her periods when she's pregnant, and every woman has breast milk when the baby comes out. So it was quite a clever idea. And, but what's fascinating, he drew a passage from the nipple down to the uterus. Now, nowadays, we know there is a passage, except it's a hormonal passage, and it's called oxytocin. And we know that is true. There is a connection between the nipple and the uterus, but it's hormonally through the bloodstream. And his idea 
because the endocrine system wasn't described for another 400 years. So it's quite interesting, this was wrong, but wrong and in some ways correct. Ten years later, ten years later, he does this drawing. Which if you look at the anatomy here, it's pretty accurate. If you look at the anatomy of the testis, penis and seminal vesicles, it's pretty accurate. You can see the seminal vesicles are draining into the base of the penis, which is absolutely true. And this is, in fact, I've shown in the yellow arrows of the same structures on a modern scan. And the uterus, which is in the middle picture, is actually a fairly accurate representation of a uterus in, 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 in the correct position. And its connection, here is the kidneys, here's the, here's the ovarian testicular, uh, sorry, the ovarian gonadal vessels going up to the aorta and IVC, which is true. So within 10 years, having dissected the female anatomy, he got a pretty accurate description. They still didn't know where babies came from, but he got an accurate description of the anatomy of the female pelvis. And I would be pretty happy if most of my medical students actually understood the female pelvis as well as that. These days, with the little amount of anatomy that they do, that's not always true. And this I want to bring you to the end. Again, how many people have seen this picture of the baby in utero previously? Come on, put your hands up if you've seen it before. Okay, not so many of you, but about a dozen or more. It's a very famous picture of Leonardo's. And what you can see here is the baby in utero. He's drawn the, drawn the uterus rather like a walnut casing, which of course it isn't quite as big as that. And there's the ovary at the side, which is correctly done. But even more interestingly, you can see that he's tried to explain the placenta rather like Velcro. Do you all know what Velcro is? You call it Velcro. You do? Okay. Like Velcro, and he's shown the uterus here, the babies and the mother's parts of the, of the placenta, like Velcro, interweaving with each other, which again is a very clever idea and it's not far from the truth. All right? But he obviously had had a stillborn baby to draw because the position of breech delivery is absolutely perfect there. I managed to get a very similar picture from GE showing a 4D scan ultrasound of a baby in utero. And you can see how accurate the, the drawing is and the position it is. What happened, in fact, at the time that I first gave a lecture on this topic, a few months ago, one of my daughters was pregnant. So I gave her some money and I said, I want you to do me a favor, Nadia. I want you to go down to the latest scanning in London and I want you to get your tummy scanned so I can have this little picture to compare with Leonardo's picture. And at the time, when I first gave the lecture, I didn't know, I didn't know whether that, nor did my daughter know whether it was a boy or a girl. But just to tell you, his name's Alfred and he's about uh, four months old now. And he, he's my latest grandson. <laughs> So I hope I've shown you that Leonardo was an extraordinary scientist anatomist, an amazing artist who was hundreds of years ahead of his time, and sadly all the pictures that I've shown you were not revealed until about the 1800s when only a couple of people looked at them, and it wasn't until the 1900s that they went on display, and the reason that I am, in fact, England has them. They, the Queen owns all 500 pictures of Leonardo's at Windsor Castle. And that was because someone, when Leonardo died, someone bought his pictures in a, in a, a folio and they sold them to the Duke of Arundel who gave them to Charles II in 1660 something. And that is why the British Queen has the most valuable collection of anatomy drawings of Leonardo da Vinci. I'll be happy with Hack also to answer questions on anything you've heard today. Thank you. Just in, just in case any of you happen to be want, going to Edinburgh between August and November this year, they're, off, they're on exhibit at the Holyrood Palace in Edinburgh between August and September. <laughs>